you look back and you don't realize how people, whether it's the hand of God or something, they just, they add something that's so magical, but you can't, you couldn't put your finger on it. Mark was one of those people. He just, he would lighten the, the room and, and then he saw that Jimmy and I needed to play. So we would, we would stay, Butch would go home and we would stay for a couple hours and just jam on riffs and just play music and just talk about what was great about, I don't know, Ian Pace or something. You know, you just need those people. Mark, some... Mark was like that. Uh, he's He was one of my dearest friends. So you and know what I'm saying yes. personally. It's like sometimes you just need somebody who's not in your orbit, who's not on your weird death trip. Right. Who can say, hey, have some fun, lighten up. It's good. I like what you're doing. Or come in and say, I like what you guys are doing. Oh, Mark likes it. Must be doing something good. A little bit of confidence, you know. That goes a long way, especially to a young musician. Sometimes you need, because um, we were very much, particularly with Butch, we were in that sort of paternalistic relationship. Butch was our first real producer. Mm -hmm. So Butch was like dad. Uh, and, you know, that's not a necessarily a fair role to put Butch in. We laugh about it now. But, you know, we'd be like, oh, dad wants us to be in tune. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Fucking dad wants to be in tune, you know. So <laughs> would you refer to him as that or no? Just... No, of course not. But... Of course not. I'll tell you a quick funny story about Butch. So Butch, back in the day, he always wore a white T-shirt and a vest, and we were obsessed with the vest. You know what I mean? T-shirt and a vest. <laughs> and uh, so one day we were like, "What's with the vest?" You know? And he was like, "Well, you know, I'm a producer. You know, like makes me seem more official." <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, we don't care. He was like, yeah, but I need it. I, I need the vest. You know I, mean? like, I need to feel like I'm this guy, you know? Uh, between the first and second record, you guys, did your relationship with Butch change at all? Because a lot happened between the first and second record. Well, I know you've had your uh, Nirvana uh, reminisce. I was at Smart Studios the day Butch got the Nirvana job for Nevermind. Mm -hmm. There was originally another producer that was supposed to be on the session with him. And when I said, why do they want you to work with this other producer? Well, they don't trust me. I'm too young. Kurt wants me, but they, they need the other producer to be an adult in the room. Something like that. I'm paraphrasing. That producer d dropped out. So then it became Butch's job. So we were uh, very close to Butch. Butch bangs off to go do what became Nevermind. Uh, as I've told this story a few times, we're sitting with him on a Wisconsin lake on July 4th, whatever the year would have been. He says, you want to hear the new Nirvana? He's got a boom box. He presses it and it's teen spirit. And, um, you know, as the sun's going down on a beautiful Wisconsin summer day. Um, and I had two reactions. First of all, I was like, oh, he ripped off Boston more than a feeling, interesting. And then when the song kicked in, I looked at Butch and I said, you ripped off my guitar song, motherfucker. <laughs> and he kind of was like, I guess I did. Because everything that he took into that was stuff I taught him. Butch didn't need me to teach him how to mic up a cabinet, but the way I would layer guitars, Butch was like, oh, I'll take that. So now Nirvana's on the radio every 18 seconds. And of course, every time I hear the guitar, I'm like, oh, there's my guitar sound. Uh, and, you know, Nirvana blows up big, Pearl Jam blows up big. And like I said, you know, when we talked, uh, you know, we were under this tremendous pressure. So it was a bit of sibling rivalry, to use the term loosely. And our guy is now the number one rock producer in the world, literally overnight. We were with Butch the night he found out Nevermind went to number one. Mm -hmm. We were having an Italian dinner in Madison, Wisconsin. We literally toasted Butch Vick. Congratulations, you're the number one producer in the world. If you go back a couple years, we met on a Wisconsin street. He's Butch Vig, the nobody, and we're the Smashing Pumpkins. We're nobodies. So in that short time, we have a major label deal. We have the biggest selling independent album of all time. Now he's Butch Vig, the big rock producer. It was like, how do we navigate right. this new thing? I think the way we navigated it was we went and made Siamese Dream together. And I think, I'm trying to put this in a way that would translate in this context. I think Butch loves us and, and loved us, loves us. 
And I think the way he repaid his love to us was, I'm going to make sure you guys get that opportunity. I'm going to go all the way. It makes him emotional because I get it now in a way as an adult that I wouldn't have as a child. I'm going to give you everything I have, including the gravitas of my buzz. I'm going to make sure that the pumpkins get across the line too. And not turn you into nirvana. Let the pumpkins be the pumpkins. It's very emotional to me when I look back on it now because I realize he did us a good deed in that. Because I can't imagine who was blowing up his phone after that record. Oh, yeah. I mean, can you imagine who was calling? I mean, Everybody. not just grunge legends. Like, yeah. It would have been legends of the past because he figured out the magic formula because, you know, and, and it's, it was obvious then and it's obvious now. Nevermind was a once-in-a-generational record. It was that record. It was, are you experienced? It was like, hello, something is happening. And we don't know what it is, but we know it, things have changed. So I think Butch going into that bunker with us at Triclops and spending that five months of hair pulling, arguing, and making that crazy record um, was his way of showing fidelity to, to Pumpkins and in particular me. Because we had a very... Uh, strong symbiotic relationship as producers you know i influenced him he definitely influenced me um not everybody likes it when i talk about my influence in that particular way but i'm a producer i mean why shouldn't i talk about it that way if i was just the producer of the smashing pumpkins nobody would have a problem with what i'm saying it's not that i want to take credit um kurt was you know easily the most talented person in our in our class it's it's, it's not a problem for me to say that, but it was weird to be in a situation where your guy, your guy is now this other guy, and you're watching him navigate fame, money, pressure, and then trying to ameliorate that back into the pumpkins world, which was very specific, and we had a very specific relationship, and we weren't the, we weren't the type of band that was going to act different because now it's Butch Vig. We didn't give a shit. We weren't going to treat Butch any different because he was Butch Vig. Um, we were going to still do what we were going to do. Um, and then by extension, and not to overly belabor it, he and Jimmy had a very, and continue to have, Jimmy and Butch just worked together on something recently. So I think Butch's uh, side project thing he did. Jimmy and Butch have a very intense symbiotic relationship. Probably even more intense than It's Butch a drum, and, drummer thing, maybe. Yes, it's a, right? definitely a drummer thing. Butch and I is more of a producer visionary mm -hmm. his version versus my version but it's a good it's a good combo um and it and it and it went on to be important for both of us but the thing between him and jimmy is more like it's like brothers or something they're 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 bound pretty tight